Oh, hello. You know, in Commander, we have the entire Magic the Gathering library through which to build our decks from. And that means there's a lot of cards out there that maybe your friends and opponents haven't really heard of or haven't really considered as being effective in the format and yet are effective nonetheless. Presented here today are the top black cards for Commander that are likely unknown or otherwise underused and yet still highly effective for the format. And what's more, we're limiting ourselves to cards that only cost one CMC. Let's take a look. Unlike other magic formats, Commander is a format of mana ramp, huge splashy sorceries and giant Voltron creatures. When building your commander deck, the cards that inspire and get you digging through your collection are things like Insurrection, Villainous Wealth, Sun Titan, and Avenger of Zendikar. You want to stuff as many of these exciting cards into your deck as you can. But we need to remember that the laws of magic bind Commander just as they bind other formats. And central to that is, generally, we get to play one land per turn. This means it will take some number of turns of the game before you can begin playing the good stuff. Yes, most good commander decks will play ramp cards like Soul Ring or Arcane Signet or Cultivate to accelerate their mana so they can play the higher cost goodies sooner than later. But you'll also want to include a fair number of other low mana cards that you can play early on to establish a battlefield presence and to interact with your opponent. What's particularly nice about having a critical mass of lower cost spells is increasing the number of turns where you can play more than one spell in a single turn, which can give you a stronger position when facing down multiple opponents. The trick, of course, is finding low mana spells that can have a decent impact no matter when you draw them in the game. And it can be particularly difficult to find ones worth playing in a slower multiplayer format like Commander especially ones that cost a single mana. If you've found yourself struggling to find good one-mana cards worth putting in your deck, you're in luck. Today I'm presenting good one-mana commander cards you probably didn't know existed in black. For my first card, Hex marks the spot. Artificer's Hex, that is. Equipment cards are incredibly popular in Commander, and cards like Lightning Greaves, Skulk Lamp, and Sunforger are nearly auto-includes in any deck that can run them. While black can kill creatures all day long, it often struggles to deal with artifacts. This strange little card from Magic 2014 gives black a flavorful and cheap way to blunt the effectiveness of the most powerful equipment card on the battlefield. And if you have cards in your deck that care about devotion, such as Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which drains each opponent for life equal to your devotion to black, every extra black mana pip adds up. What's that bubbling in yonder cauldron? If it's not Fenny Snake and Howlet's Wing, it's likely bubbling muck. Longtime tournament players may remember a card from Fallen Empires called High Tide that led to some explosive turns mixed with ways to draw a lot of extra cards like Time Spiral. High Tide reads until end of turn, whenever a player taps an island for mana, that player adds an additional blue. Bubbling Muck does the same, but for swamps and black mana. This hidden gem from Urza's Destiny can give mono black decks a big temporary mana boost until the end of turn, which you can then dump into something like Damnable Pact to draw extra cards, or Dregs of Sorrow to kill creatures and draw extra cards. Or maybe you just want to play a huge flying demon like Villus, Broker of Blood, quite a few turns ahead of schedule to torment your foes. They say it's darkest before the dawn, but anytime you care about the color of creatures, it's a great time to consider Darkest Hour. This enchantment from Urza Saga was reprinted in 7th edition, but the original is nearly half the price if you're not married to the incredible art. Turning all creatures on the battlefield black has some interesting implications if you include the right cards. Creatures equipped with Sword of Light and Shadow or Sword of Feast and Famine, which both give protection from black, are practically unblockable when there's a Darkest Hour on the battlefield. Elephant Grass is an enchantment that prevents black creatures from attacking you, or just make sure you can get lots of cards back 
back from the graveyard when you cast the green instant reap, which returns up to X target cards from your graveyard to your hand, where X is the number of black permanents target opponent controls. If you're playing Night Tribal, you probably have both white and black cards, so combine Darkest Hour with Northern Paladin, which taps for double white to destroy target black permanent. Next, let's give a vigorous round of underworld applause for Demonic Vigor. Creatures die in magic. A lot. And they die even more in Commander, where everyone is packing sweeper spells to clear cluttered battlefields. For just one mana, you can enchant your most important creature, giving it a small boost, but feeling secure that if it dies, you'll get that creature back to your hand. This is going to be particularly nice if you're running a Commander that has a dies trigger you want to use. If it dies and you put it into the command zone instead, you don't get that trigger. When Child of Valara dies, you destroy all Narnland permanents. When Kakusho, the Evening Star, dies, you drain five points of life from each opponent. With Demonic Vigor, you can let your commander die, go to the graveyard and get the trigger, and then pop it back to your hand. There are a lot of great aura synergies in Commander these days, and Demonic Vigor can slot right into decks that run cards like Sigarda's Aid, where you can cast auras at instant speed, or just Core Spirit Dancer, which will let you draw a card when you cast an aura. And of course, Rise to Glory, which can bring an aura back from the graveyard. Another excellent one-mana card is Executioner's Capsule, the card that functions as a rattlesnake, warning opponents away from attacking you with their valuable non-black creature. And if they end up attacking other opponents, you're getting value from it without even having to pop it off. Consider pairing this with Scuttle Mutt, which can tap to change the colors of a target creature so you can use the capsule even on black creatures. It's easy to forget that this black spell is also an artifact, so it synergizes nicely with cards like Glissa, the Traitor, and Salvaging Station, where you can get this back from the graveyard when a creature dies and then use it again, and maybe again and again. If you're running Scrapyard Trawler, sacrificing Executioner's capsule can return an artifact from the graveyard that is zero mana cost. Hangerback Walker and Walking Ballista are both considered to cost zero mana when they're in the graveyard, and are fantastic, simply fantastic, to get back at any stage of the game. And if an artifact that costs two or more mana dies, Scrapyard Trawler can get back Executioner's Capsule. Next up, graveyard synergies are incredibly powerful in Commander, so to better combat those, do I have a deal for you, Rag Dealer. For three mana, you can tap Rag Dealer to exile up to three target cards in a single graveyard. When building fun Commander decks, it's easy to overlook cards to combat the many ways that players exploit the graveyard for advantage. But if you scrimp on them, you'll often find yourself falling further and further behind. If you're playing a rogue tribal deck, the Rag Dealer slots right in. And similarly, if you're playing human tribal with black, you should find room for it too. At just one mana, it can be played early and stall those players who might otherwise begin self-milling early with cards like Glimpse the Unthinkable or Dredge cards like Golgari Grave Troll. And it's easy to bring back from the graveyard with cards like Revel Arc, which returns up to two target creatures with power two or less to the battlefield when it dies. Or a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants, where it's negative two returns a creature card with converted mana cost two or less to the battlefield. It can even be useful from the graveyard when you play Necrotic Ooze, which can copy any creature ability from any graveyard. Or Lazav the Multifarious, which can become a copy of Rag Dealer for just one mana if you need to clear out someone's graveyard. You know, here at Telarian Community College, the next card may be Shrouded, but it's not forgotten. I'm talking about Shrouded Lore, a time-shifted version of Forgotten Lore that showed up in Planner Chaos and was recently reprinted for the Mystery Booster product. This sorcery lets a target opponent choose a card in your graveyard, and if they don't choose one you want, you can pay a black mana to make them choose a different card until they run out of choices. You run out of mana, or you get the card you want. Cards that rely on your opponents making choices for you aren't always the greatest in Magic, but since Commander is a multiplayer format, you can bring politics to the table when casting this spell. Say one of your opponents has played a creature that's going to kill someone, and you've got an answer to it in your graveyard. Choose one of the other players and ask them to choose the answer card to help out everyone else. Or strike up a deal. I'll leave you alone for this turn and the next if you give me the card I want. 
but don't rely solely on an opponent cooperating to make this card work for you. Black decks often have access to lots of black mana with cards like Cabal Coffers, or a card we talked about earlier, Bubbling Muck. Even if you have to spend four or five extra mana to get the card you want back, it usually is going to be worth it. Another approach is to limit the choices of cards by removing the cards you don't want, using cards with Delve like Gurmag Angler, or cards with the escape mechanic like Pulcaranos Unchained. Yes, yes, I know I probably mispronounced that. Guess what? I don't care. Yes, I was an English major. That's not an English word. Leave me alone. Go away. Coming up next, it's not a soft sell to say you'll love the next card, Tainted Strike. This instant gives a target creature plus one plus zero and infect until the end of turn. If you're not playing a dedicated infect deck, you'll likely be able to surprise an opponent when they think they're just taking nine points of damage from an unblocked Yargle, Glutton of Urborg. Oops, sorry, that's actually 10 poison counters. You're dead, game over, shuffle up, go home. And if you pair it up with ways to get extra attacks from something like Aggravated Assault or Combat Celebrant, you could take out multiple players. You could also use use this defensively as a way to permanently shrink a large attacker that you're blocking. And if they get enough negative one, negative one counters, even an indestructible creature can be taken out. What's particularly nice about Tainted Strike is that you could target any creature with this spell, not just your own. So if one opponent is attacking another opponent, you can pick a creature on either side of the combat to give it plus one, plus zero power and infect. It's always hilarious when opponent A attacks opponent B with a nine power creature and you just sit back, Tainted Strike that thing, take out an opponent with another person's attacker? Beautiful. And don't forget that killing something with negative one, negative one counters can neutralize the persist ability of creatures like Kitchen Finks. As we continue down the list, your opponents will certainly think you're an evil genius when the creature they've killed comes back and stronger than ever with Undying Evil. This instant gives a target creature undying until the end of turn. It can be problematic to hold up mana for reactive spells, but for just one mana, Undying Evil is worth it if you're playing creatures that your opponents will want to kill. And let's face it, if you're playing Commander correctly, then you're playing creatures that your opponents are going to want to kill. Well, this works particularly well with creatures that have Enter the Battlefield triggers, since you'll get that extra value to easily make it worth spending a card and a mana to bring the creature back from the graveyard. Think of cards like Baleful Strix, which draws you a card, Ravenous Chupacabra, which destroys a creature, and of course, Sad Robot, which ramps a basic land onto the battlefield. And like Tainted Strike, you can target a creature your opponent controls with Undying Evil, so feel free to make a deal that can help you both out if you bring back their creature. Hey, you can also run this alongside the previously discussed Demonic Vigor for commanders that have died triggers that you want to take advantage of. As we look at our next card, it's important to remember that two wrongs don't make a right. And yet, you can't go wrong with vampiric rights if you're running creatures in Commander. For two mana and sacrifice a creature to activate, you gain one life and draw a card. Look, creatures die a lot in Commander, so if you have your mana open and one or more of your creatures is going to die anyway, you might as well cash them in for a card and an incidental point of life. Or maybe you need to dig for a card to get you out of a desperate situation and you have some expendable creatures. This is also a great way to get your Commander out from under an aura that's neutralized it, like, you know, Darksteel Mutation, an aura which removes all the creature's abilities and makes it an indestructible 0-1 insect. Sacrifice it to draw a card, put it back into your command zone, and replay it later. Or if someone is going to steal your big creature with cards like Captivating Crew or Dragon Lord Silumgar, just sacrifice it for a card and a life instead. But to really leverage vampiric rights, you need to play recursive creatures you can easily get back from the graveyard like Blood-Soaked Champion or Reassembling Skeleton or Bloodgast. With enough mana available, you can turn into a serious card drawing engine. Last on the list is my absolute favorite, a card I personally played with in high school. And though the new art and flavor text is not as great as the classic, Will of the Wisp is my number one pick of a one drop card in black that you probably didn't know existed. As I said, this card has been around since the very beginning of Magic and recently showed up again in Masters 25 and in Mystery Boosters. For one black mana, you get a flying blocker that regenerates cheaply. So if an opponent is looking to chip in 
taken damage somewhere, it's highly likely they'll point their creature elsewhere. Later in the game, you can actually shift gears and use this aggressively thanks to its evasion. Just equip Will of the Wisp with cards like Lash Wrath to give it plus one plus one for each swamp you control, or Sword of Sinew and Steel, which gives it plus two plus two, protection from black and red, and whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target Planeswalker and up to one target Artifact. Since Will of the Wisp is not a human, it can be a prime target for cards with Mutate from the recent Ikoria set, where picking up flying and regenerating can be quite handy. C Dasher Octopus draws you a card when the mutated creature deals combat damage to a player. Insatiable Hemophage has Death Touch and can mutate into a 3-3, so with flying and regeneration, it turns into a superb blocker. From Commander 2020, Otrimi the Ever Playful adds Trample to Will of the Wisps flying for extra evasion, a 6-6 body, and when it deals combat damage to a player, return target creature card with mutate from your graveyard to your hand. But now I wanna hear from you. What black cards that cost only one CMC should I have included on this list? And remember, we're focusing on the unknown or underutilized cards, so do not say Fatal Push. To heck with Fatal Push. We want the hidden gems. Special thanks go out to this video's professional consultant, Benny Smith, as well as our editor, Jonathan Choi. As always, I'm so excited when I get the chance to work with Benny as he's been writing professionally about magic for 20 years. He's written the authoritative book on the format, The Complete Commander, and I'll include links to that as well as his weekly columns and other work in this video's description. completely honest with you here, m one of my deep fears as a lover of the local game store is that this pandemic might just be a, a point where in a lot of the, the meetings, the answer is, well, let's just put all of our attention, all of our effort uh, post-pandemic into digital, like that this, this is digital all in or nothing. You're saying that the local game stores are still a big, important part of this equation and a part of recovery efforts? Oh, absolutely. I mean, let me say this. I know there's this fear out there that somehow we're just going to make Magic a digital game and just get rid of tabletop, like... Like, I, I think there's this fear that we're going to, like, phase out tabletop over time or something. Yes, huge fear. And what I, I mean, what, so, f number one, tabletop is an organic main way of magic. It, it, currently, right now, I mean, not during the pandemic, but normally, we make more money off tabletop magic than anything else. <laughs>